This is old electronic stand, and this is part two of the WebCore reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder repair. Um, if you missed part one, go back and check it out. Those of you who have seen part one will recognize this opening image because I borrowed it for the closing of part one, and I'm reusing it here. <laughs> so at this point, uh, the this circuit board has had the new parts installed that it needed. I'm going to go over some of the parts I took out of it. Uh, you'll probably be amazed to see how bad some of them were. Uh, it makes me very thankful I took the time to dig into this as deeply as I did. So at this point, we'll be putting things back together and we'll ultimately be testing this thing to see how it works. Okay, I'm back. I've got new parts and I've replaced the resistors um, off camera. I'm not sure how exciting it would be to watch me change resistors, so I didn't show you that part. But I started, decided to um, show you some of the resistors I pulled out of this thing. Now, there are this style of resistor, which is, these are Allen Bradleys. They're square, square edges and uh, smooth surface, um, for the most part decent. And some of these that I replaced were, um, they were out, sometimes they were on the edge, uh, sometimes because of their location, uh, I decided just to replace them anyway because they were no longer reading as close to their uh, value as I, I thought as I would have liked so I, I, did I just simply replaced them. These things I don't know what these are. I, I think I did, did know at one time I just don't know. Now this is a brown, green, yellow. It's supposed to be 150k ohms. <laughs> that's uh, that's nowhere near it's absolutely nowhere near what it's supposed to be. It's insane. These resistors are simply not trustworthy. They kind of look like Allen Bradley's, but the corners are more rounded, and the surface is not as smooth as the Allen Bradley's. And now this one is supposed to be... I think it's supposed to be the same value. What are you? All right, so this, again, is supposed to be 100 and 50k, so this one's a little closer, it's 194. Um, but I decided that was not close enough. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 15k, so you're supposed to be off, and it's beyond that significantly. This one is supposed to be an 8.2. <clears throat> and I'll put you down here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, 14k. Um, supposed to be, this is red, red, I'm sorry, gray, red, red, so 8.2 K ohms. Um, when I first measured this one, I thought, I've got to be, uh, figuring this out wrong, but, you know, that's definitely 8, and that's definitely 2, and two zeros, it's got to be that. I was shocked, well, the first one I showed you was really what shocked me. Um... So I'm glad I went through and checked all the resistors. They were way off. And this is an Allen Bradley. I don't remember what the case was with this one. Was it way off or was it just a little off? This one was supposed to be, I guess, in the mega range. Uh, what are you? Um, this one is supposed to be um, 15 megs, I believe. And it's reading 28. So this is one. This is an Allen Bradley, and it's definitely nowhere near where it's supposed to be. Most of the others were okay, and I probably could have left them in there, but I wasn't really happy with the um, the values that they were running. Now this is interesting. This is I recognize this capacitor from. It was from, um, get my brain to work right here. My dad had found some, um, what, were they, what would they be called? In some of the old, old tube com uh, computers, um, 
they would have racks that would slide out and they'd have tubes on them and then they have components underneath the uh, the tube sockets and he brought home some of those racks and um, and I know I took some components out of these racks I don't know if he also did this capacitor was in the the, uh, the board on the board of this uh, tape recorder and I don't know if he replaced this or if I did. I checked this out. Uh, this is not electric electrolytic, by the way. Um, it might be an oil filled. I don't know, but it's a, it's similar to a paper cap. This thing tests out pretty pretty well. I mean, it seems okay. Again, though, because it's old and this is hard to get to, it's a lot of work to get to. Um, I opted to replace it and. Then we have this thing. This is rather interesting. Um, this did have a wire connected to the center here that stuck out. And when I saw this, I thought, well, that's weird. And I looked on the top. And so two of the wires are tied together. This is the ground side of the capacitor, and this is the positive. So my first thought was, oh, they're using the capacitor to tie two runs on the circuit board together to run the ground from one point to another point. It turns out that was not the case. As nearly as I can figure, the extra pin was simply there to support the capacitor. I've never seen one like this before. It's 15 megafarad, 300 working volts. Um, I don't know, I just thought that was unique. And we have a couple of sun capacitors, which are eh, not so hot. So now, let's go back over here. And let's see where we are here. Okay. So there is... If I get in there. And let's see, there we are. So there's my circuit board. Um, actually, I've got one more thing I have to do. I forgot. I believe that I have one more wire to connect so I just noticed it floating around loose when I was taking this apart I think I um, originally thought oh come on you maybe I'll zoom out a little bit the other way alright I thought I was going to have to take this wire off from here and I decided not to go there because um, I thought it was easier just to go from that connection. So I'm warming up my soldering iron, and I should be able to put that in back in there, and I think that solves that last connection I have to make. Um, so, come on, don't fall over on me. Now, let's see here. Alright. Oh. Oh, yes, I remember now. We are going to have to... I don't know if this is going to work or not. Um, um, they have a little metal piece that is actually... Um, secured around the wire, crimped around the wire, and um, it, uh, I haven't really seen that before, but anyway, so I think that's, well, other than the wire, I have to put back there. Oh, and now, that's out of the way, let's go look at my power supply. Oops, I'm banging my camera again and stay there and we're going to see if we can zip in there a little bit all right this doesn't i guess uh, we're going to have to do something different here because i don't want to go where i want to go all right so what i did oh, by the way <coughs> my original idea was to um solder I put this I put this uh, 
Oh, my brain is flying a terminal strip in here. My brain went to sleep on me. I was trying to think of a word. Okay, I went to put this terminal strip in here, and I thought, well, I'll just solder that to this. But I saw the color of the metal, and I said, mm hmm. So I started looking. That's riveted in. Over here, you may not be able to see it, but there's a, there's a bolt, and there's a ground attached to that. That's bolted in. This has a ground connection, and that is riveted in. Nothing is soldered to this. So I said, hmm. So I, I said, well, I'll try it anyway. So I got my soldering iron out, and uh, solder just beat it up and rolled off. I said, okay. So, so I put the terminal strip in. I clipped all of the um, connections off from the um, old capacitor. And then I rewired everything, like as you see it. Um, and uh, tried to do a decent, neat job. I think I did all right. It's interesting when you start thinking about, okay, how do I get everything back in place? Originally I had this resistor coming in from this side, which then it was in the way of those. And this was is likely to get warm. So I really didn't want it under these or against these. Because there were different ways I could have done that. And I realized, oh, put this here and put that there. And I just hope it doesn't get warm enough to cook the terminal strip. But anyway, so I have already tested this. It does work. Um, I didn't have any shorts. Uh, the tubes are lighting. Um, I'm getting sound out of the speaker when I uh, move the volume control. So I'm pretty sure this is ready to go. So the next thing I've got to do then is put it all back together. So I'm going to park this in my tripod. And we're going to go to uh, try to reassemble all this. So, um, and all right. This is definitely not a lot of fun. Um, one thing I have to say is that this was not designed for serviceability. It definitely was not. Um, See, is that going to be a problem? Hmm. Oh, that might be an issue. Let's see here. And pull it to the other side. Okay. Well, I guess that's going to be okay. Um. That's going to be good. i got to make sure, but I think everything's fine. Well, that's under the transformer anyway. All right. I think we're all right. Now, what is interesting about this is... Right here. You have to really pay attention to how things were originally put together, because if you don't, you run into trouble. And I almost did. Um, the reason I thought I had a problem getting this in there is because I was trying to put this side of this on the other side of this frame, and my fingers are, are in the way. All right, so this part goes on the outside of the frame. I was trying to go inside the frame, and that didn't work. I was wondering why I thought something was interfering with me putting it where I want where it should go, and I was really worried because I'd rewired under all the under there that maybe I had uh, put wiring in places where I really didn't want it to be. So.
It always amazes me that I can t take something apart, think I'm paying attention, and when it goes to put it back together, when it comes time to put it back together, I wasn't. Now, for instance, um, this is a fine th thread, thread screw, this is not. So I'm guessing, since the other screw is a coarse thread, that's what belongs here. Another detail that I overlooked, unfortunately. Um, and that way too much stuff on my desk. Uh, that quarter of five sixteenths. It is not that. It is that. Okay. And let's see, a little bit loose. There's another rule that I <coughs> invariably violate. And that's whenever anything has more than uh, a couple of fasteners, uh, you, I tend to not tighten all the fasteners until everything is in place, until all the fasteners are in place, and I know that they are, that everything is lining up. And the reason for that is simple. Invariably, if I put in three screws, and something has four screws, and I tighten all three screws down, the, um, no, that's not going to go where I want it to, so we'll go over here first. Invariably, that fourth screw will not go, because things are not lined up anymore. So, I try to remember to not put all the fasteners in and tighten them all down. Uh, and then wind up with the frustration of having to loosen the other fasteners. It's really annoying when you've got six or eight of them or more of them, and you've got and you've gone gone and gotten done, and you put in six or seven of them, and number eight won't go in. <coughs> and this is really not fun to get to. You'd think it wouldn't be that bad, but there's a wire right there in my way. Come on. Get in there. Can I? Can I get you started? Let's try this. Uh -huh. Ah, there we go. Maybe. Please. Yes. Alright, and then. I think I can get my banners in there. These fingers reach. That looks promising. Uh, yes, I think. Or not. No. No. No, no, no. Ah. fun. I love how they put things right in the way. You can't go straight at the bolt. There isn't a lot of room to do anything but use a socket. And so now it's safe to take up these other two because all four of them are in and we're good to go. Now, um, This makes me a little bit nervous because these are these skinny little wires for the output transformer. Um, I don't like that they're just hanging out there in the reeds where I can snag them and do bad things. I may tape those. This is an old piece of equipment. And If I damage that transformer, I'm in serious hurt. So, this, I'm just noticing that this could be potentially, oh, of course you're going to do that. This could potentially be a problem. If I were to yank on those wires, and yeah, I know, 
black electrical tape. It's not necessarily the best thing because it leaves sticky stuff all over the place. But I'd rather do that and have this protected. Uh, is that helping me at all? I think so. I just don't want bad things to happen to this. And I'm going to be moving this around and working on it. So I didn't notice that. I didn't think about that. I don't want to take it apart. Yeah, that looks ugly. But ugly is better than broken, as far as I'm concerned. So now that's secure. Um, yeah, all right. So next thing. Where are we at? Okay. I have to swing this back around. Now this is a really fun thing because this has to go on here. And the way this works is, I don't know if you can see, you've got these little fingers right here. And they grab the top of the circuit board. <coughs> now, I had fun getting this out. What I'm going to try to do is, um, and down in here, there's you've got these two controls. And the other thing is, down in here, which you can't see, are uh, grommets. And this one decided to, to bail out on me, and I'm glad I noticed that it had done that, because uh, I would rather have that back together the way it belonged. And put that there. They sure didn't leave you any extra room for your cord. Alright, let's see. Can we go in there like that? Um, maybe it goes above. Which means... Alright. Um, hmm. Do, 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 do. Well... Let's try it this way. Get this out of the way. Spin this around. And make this go there. Does that work? Yes. I think it does. And then take that and go there. Now, I'll, I'll solder that into where it belongs later. So here's... oh. Here's the other fun thing about all this. And I just turned this off. Why did I do that? I don't know. <clears throat> okay. Alright. Um. Oh. Is that going to work? Eek. Hmm. I don't know if that's going to go without putting that bracket in place first. Well, here's the fun, here's one of the fun things. Um, you've got this is the on-off switch here, and you've got to reach in here and solder this wire on, and then solder that wire on. But you can only do it once it's in place because these wires are very short. Um, but I just noticed another problem. That metal bracket that I've got to put back in here most likely isn't going to allow me, because this wire is in the way, I'm most likely not going to be able to get that together if I put this in in advance. So, alright, let's see here. Please don't break anything. Now, Go in there, go in there. Alright. Okay, slide that up and down. And that wire is just a shade short. Letting me go in here where I want to, how I want to. Ooh, 
Are you going to cooperate? Really? Oh my. Um, uh, let's see. Pop this up a little bit so I can see better. So you can see where that is. Alright. Does have to go. So is this way, or does it go above? I don't know. Cause I didn't look. I didn't look at my video. Oh, I think it goes through the side here. So this can't be here. All right. That's gotta go. Come on, let's go. All right. Now, so that has to go through there. Cause this. If I don't have enough light to see by. This has a socket that this goes to. Um, and let's see, so those tabs are where I want them. This is where I want it. And I believe, oh, yes, and up here, that goes there. I think it goes out that way. We have a uh, switch. The switch and there's a there's a ha there we are. That pin has to go into that pl that plate because this is your playback and control and the record switch. Okay, let's see. All right, that looks good. So now I think. Uh, where I'm breathing. Oh, or something like that. Okay, so. So I think my next step, uh, next thing I want to do is screw the circuit board to this, to this bracket. And then, and that is quarter inch. So we do a little socket change here. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. No, of course not. Fine. All right. Be that way. Oh, no, no, no. This is not nice. I don't know where you went. That was so close. Ah, there it is. I was so close to getting that started. Maybe I should just get it. It's sort of started and try my socket on it. Let's see. All right. Ha, maybe. Ooh. Oh, I got so lucky. It actually went. All right, and before I violate my rule of never tightening everything down till all the fasteners are in, we got to get the other side in there. All right. So if you see how they've—I <laughs> don't know if you can see this. I got to swing this a little bit. And put that light on there. Now, let's zip that in there a little bit. Now you saw, uh, am I where I want to be? Oh yeah, all right, let's swing this some more. And let's see, there we are, right there. That's where the hole is, right there. That's what makes it so much fun. They give you so much room to do things with. Ooh, let's try that. Oh, no, no, no. Ha. Ah. Oh, goody. My circuit board is mounted. As I was tightening the last screw, the thought crossed my mind. 
did I is is was the um was the paper backing that protects the circuit board from shorting against things was it there did I make sure it was there and I just I just checked and it was thank goodness because that would really annoy me if I had to go back in there okay so <clears throat> I need to um yes okay just figuring out where everything's supposed to go and I think I know I'm going to have to check it out oh while I'm thinking about it <clears throat> early on I made the silly, silly statement that this was a stereo, possibly a stereo tape recorder. Well, that was wishful thinking on my part. Although, actually, I kind of didn't want it to be, because I have a stereo, and it's nicer. It's nice if you've got a stereo and a mono, because some of the tapes I have are mono and some are stereo. So it's, it's actually easier if you have one of each type. Look at this volume control and this tone control. What do you notice there? Those are not stereo controls. Those are mono controls. And uh, this an external. This jack is an external amp. It's an output. It's mono. This thing is mono. I don't know why it says stereo on that connector on the back. I have a feeling they use that same cover on their stereo models. And there are. Um, there are a variety of different models that are similar, but they are not the same. And another thing that another interesting thing that I ran into, um, well, first of all, I couldn't find a circuit diagram for this, and I was thinking of hunting, and I thought, well, what am I going to do now? Well, being somewhat dense. I didn't look inside the case to see if there was a, a circuit diagram. And guess what? Let's zip back out here. There is one. And we'll wash that out less if I do this. Now, fortunately it has yellowed. And so I took my camera, took a picture of it, printed it out, and it was clear enough for the most part. But you can see on the top part where it got rusted. Yeah, I had to do a little detective work to figure out where that was and what belonged there. And, but I did figure it out. So I have a circuit diagram. This thing, this circuit diagram doesn't show up anywhere. I'm, I'm not sure if they only sold a few of these. Or if, um, I just don't know. Maybe they're, I don't know why they aren't around. Uh, why there isn't more information on them. Um, <clears throat> some of the newer models of, this, of the, the web cores I found, and there's a little bit more information on those, but this one, I don't know if there's a date on this. I don't see it. I think this might be 1958 vintage, I think. I'm not sure about that. Um, But, um, it's got to be around the vintage because, these, because of the type tubes that it has. The fact that it's using a circuit board and not point-to-point -point wiring. Those are two clues that this is a somewhat newer tube type tape recorder. I use that term newer, sort of, uh, light, uh, sort of relatively. Oh, this thing is not light. I think I mentioned before this thing is a tank. I think I did. Um, now, so next thing I've got to do is uh, uh, I need to see. I don't know if that's going to make things worse or not for you. Alright, that goes there. And no, no, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Yeah. 
Let me see here. Now there's another factor that comes into play here. This, there's a little... Ah, this is not fun. Maybe I'll put this on upside down. Then I can stay. All right. Come on. Let's go. It's not being cooperative. And we just were so nicely. Um, okay. Aha, maybe. Um, Now, when you just were, ah, uh, that wire was in the way. There we go. All right. I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if it matters. But up inside here, there's a little bracket that sticks up, and it's got um, a slot in it. And the circuit board is supposed to go into that slot because it helps support the circuit board. Um, okay, let's go here. All right. There we are. That's what I want to see. This is probably how I took it apart. It took it apart in the first place. All right. So as you uh, probably figured out, um, this is not the first time this thing has been worked on. So I was pointing out to you the replacement capacitor that either me or my father put in here. Uh, I don't think that's smaller, but let's see. I don't believe that's what we want, is it? If that's true, then I should have two more of these. Yeah, apparently I do. Okay. Oh, I bet those bigger screws go to the bracket that goes on each side of this thing. Um, one, two, three, should be four, I think there are. Okay. All right, I'm going to put that in there. I believe there's a quarter inch on that already. It's hard to have a camera nearby. I don't know. Different people have the camera in different places. I can't have it in front of me. I just can't. It does not work for me. Okay, so. Alright, well while I'm here and I'm looking at it, I'm going to plug that in. Because that would be just the sort of thing I would forget. Then I'd have it doing nothing and wondering why. Okay. This socket goes to the uh, the eye tube, which goes over here. All right, so ew, I should have soldered those in there first. Uh, what's the best way to see those and get those where I want them? Uh, let's see. Um, let's see if we can get this to stay. Yes. All right. Now, uh, this is so much fun. I'll put that one in the back. That seems to work. And then solder this one in the front. I'm gonna trim that a little bit because that sticks out of ways. Hmm. Alright. Yes, of course you're going to do that. All right, well, let's do tin here. All right. Now, did I get that well enough? Let's find out. Yes, indeed. That's exactly what I wanted to do. 
All right, and this one, this is just an off switch. It doesn't matter which way I point those. And I'm going to, and this is pretty nasty looking. I think we're going to, since I do have enough wire, I'm going to just cut that off, clean this up a little bit. Oh, yeah. You can't see this, but I can. It's bad. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. Ah! I have this nice um, rosin solder flux. Um, and um, try to clean this out a little bit first. I think that's oil or something that's gotten into that. Make a nice green patina. This could just be moisture, I don't know. Alright, let's see if we can clean that up a little. It's a pain in the neck, but you know, if it doesn't solder properly. So in that, this is how I use this for solder joints that are a little difficult to get, really, to take solder. I tin it with that, heat it up, it smokes pretty good, but it cleans up really nice. Then I should be able to add some solder and have it actually stick, and it looks like it does. And so now, alright, and, <coughs> hmm, can I? Maybe. This makes it so much fun when they do stuff like this. I am going to try something. I'm going to try to aim this back out like that. And I hope that works. Um, because I shouldn't have filled that in with solder, but I did. Let's go. There we are. That's what we want right there. Okay, so, there's my better light to see, make sure that these two are not in danger of shorting out or anything, and they look okay. Alright, so, that, that's all I need to do there, and then this has to go over there. I'm trying to remember what else I have to do. So this has to go on there. I can do that. Uh, let's see. I can see the, the marks on the circuit board material. But there was no washer on this. So I'm guessing... Yes. And i got to round up another screw because I don't know where that one got to. Could be over here in my mess. Where it may have fallen out. Aha! There it is. Very nice of it to show up when I wanted it. Let's see. Alright. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Okay. So if I were betting, a betting man, I'd say those two copper washers that I just took out actually belong in here and those fun places to get to. I will review that. But first thing I want to do, actually a couple things I need to do. Um, this is where taking pictures with a camera makes a lot of sense and you don't have to go back to your video footage to try to find it. Um, and to remind yourself, this went here and that went there. Okay, well, at least I did video taking it apart, so it should be obvious. Um, where everything goes. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
do that very thing. I'm going to look at my video footage from my disassembly. I'm going to remind myself where these wires go and I'm going to make, a, uh, make note of where those washers belong. I bet you they go to that circuit board. It would make a lot of sense. Oh well. Alright. So. Um, put this back around. And I know you can get a good look at my elbow. Okay. I'm glad I... Uh, took the time to video where these wires are supposed to go because otherwise I wouldn't really know because um, I did not remember I didn't really expect to remember what did I do with my pliers over there which is why I took the time to video this, these connections all right, go in there like that. And my hand is right in the way. That's bad. Well, unfortunately, I can't really, don't really have a good way to get. All right. Okay. So. Out of that back in and I help myself by putting a hook on it and soldering that into place. Good, that looks good. Okay. All right. So I think I think it is safe to put the bracket back on the bottom. Let's see here. I think this goes through here, over there, and this one goes down through there also. There and out there. Um, and I'm muttering to myself as you're not seeing a thing I'm doing. Oh well. Um, the camera work hasn't been my strong suit lately, has it? Alright. Um, basically, all I've done is I've routed these two wires which come from these connectors, this spot up here. And. Um, Put those back in a minute. I have the bracket. Oh, I see it goes from the top. That's right. I thought I had done a goof, but apparently not. Okay. So, what I have to do now is. Oh, that's not what I want to do there. I need the soldering iron again. It's not right away. Alright, let's do this like this. And this.
There. Okay. There we go. So what's going on underneath there? Are we move on? Let's see. I think. I think. I think. Uh, just make sure. Uh, yeah, I think I'll be all right. Yeah, it's just fell down on me. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see here. What really does not help matters at all is that uh, I don't know how or when, but this got stored somewhere that was damp. And unfortunately it made for some rust problems so I will show you in a minute. Um. <clears throat> All right, so I found an old rusty wrench that would fit in here, and uh, because you can't, even with this knob off, you can't go straight down into here because all the mechanism is in the way. So I'm going to get this in there, tighten that up, I think. Oh, yeah, we're getting there. Now I'm tightening this up a little bit because when I go to work on the other side, it um, wants to push against this side. I didn't want the screw half out and then uh, it's coming free on me, which I've had happen. Um, and you start the screw on one end of something, you go to work on the other end, and you push on it, and it puts enough stress on the screw that's only part way in, and it spits it out for you. Something I'd rather not have happen. Now, I don't know what I did. No, for now we're not going to worry about it. I think I am going to do. I have to move my camera for a minute and get in here. I have rubber renew. Now, I've tried this stuff with I've tried this stuff with other things and um, had mixed results. Uh, I tried to renew the brain just went blank. The rubber roller on a turntable. <clears throat> and unfortunately, that did not work. I had to have it professionally renewed. And, uh, but then I, I, I tried it on a uh, cassette player and it did a great job because it went from not working at all, or barely working, to actually working quite nicely. So, um, uh, and that seems awfully low, but I guess that is where it runs. And unfortunately I have the wrong belt on here, so this is not behaving properly. But let me finish cleaning up some of the other pulleys. Right. Now, I put this away working. I knew it needed a new electrolytic capacitor. That was uh, that I knew. Um, of course, you know, it's been ten years since I've done anything with this. So a lot of things can happen in that time. Uh, it interestingly, interestingly enough, it um, I have to put some. I have to make up some rubber brakes or something with this, or felt brakes for this, because the brakes on this are long gone. I think I might have some felt material that I could use to put in place. This has electrical tape 
on these brakes, which are supposed to stop these from spinning. And I highly doubt that it's going to work very well. Um, I am not sure what I want to do with that. Maybe I will just use alcohol on that one. And I don't really like using alcohol. I mean, they make they make rubber cleaner specifically for this stuff. And I don't know if I should have used the rubber renewer on this. Um, I, I've been told that if you use alcohol and rubber, you dry it out. I have a feeling that this rubber is pretty dry already. Um, let's see. I mean, the rubber feels pretty good. Um, other than that, not working. Oh, the other thing I've got to do is, which is kind of annoying, um, I say annoying, well, kind of surprising, I suppose. Um, is that loose? No. Uh, can I get a light on there? And maybe I have to get you down there so you can actually see it. That is the primary, holy, everything runs off from, and as you can see, it's not a happy, happy camper. I have to decide what I'm going to use for sandpaper to clean that up. Hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do, I have some super fine paper here. But um, I don't think that's going to work. I've got some pretty tired coarser paper. And I think probably the best way for me to get to this is over here. I think. Oof. Wow. A lot of rust. I did not think that my basement here was so damp. Um, I do run a dehumidifier to keep things dry. Okay. Let's see. Oh, that works good. Um, that is the... Um, Back it out a little bit. Oops, wrong direction. Um, this is how you change the speed on this, this old beast. You have to have a screwdriver or a coin or something around every time you change speeds. This is really super fine paper. I'm going to try to run. I originally wasn't thinking I was going to do this, but I think I'm going to. Okay, all right, now, what I'm going to do is, um, there we go, all right, now, uh, let's see, all right, there's my lights in the background, I'm going to turn those back on. On. I have a an isolation transformer. Um, oops. Okay, and now let's see. This is step on off. Okay. All right. Step off. It really helps if you plug things in. Um, I've noticed that. All right, I have my cheater cord inserted, and the voltage down, turn this on, I don't seem to have much, there we go, this is good, the lights are not 
doing bad things, you can't really tell because the camera isn't showing you much. But I want to uh, Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so I gotta turn this up a bit. Turn that on more. Hear it, your audio, and we are gonna go direct and see. Hmm. That's interesting. I have something has to do with the switching. Because the minute I get to that point. Huh. Well now. Oh, I know why. Aha. Well, oh. okay. The tube is lighting up. That's good. Just reposition that. I guess not. It's all right. So at this point, this thing works. Um. And do a little bit of cleaning up top there. And then I'm going to try to um, I'm going to try to tape on this. I will do that off camera to start because I have no idea what's on these tapes. Uh, I'm going to try, but um, I'll be back. So. But anyway, I don't know. Let me just uh, give you a larger eyes view of this thing. Oops, got my fingers in front of the camera. That's not good. Um, <coughs> I've got a newer Pioneer stereo reel to reel. And it's, it's very well built, but it doesn't. I mean, there are definitely some improvements between this and that, or between that and this one. I think that you know, the newer unit has refinements this thing just doesn't have. But um, this is how they used to build things, though. I mean, this is like eighth eighth inch plate. Actually, it's probably more than that. And everything is just thick, thick, heavy metal. Of course, you pay for it when you're trying to lug this thing around, um, and you get this this these massive brackets that support the thing inside the box, and this thing is just amazingly solidly made, um, and it still works. We'll find out how well shortly, but um, I'll be back. Okay, uh, I threw a tape on here. I listened to this a little bit. And it works. I have no idea if this is copyright music or not. It's something happened to be on this tape. But this sounds pretty nice.
it uh, for having sat for so long, uh, being as old as this is, I'm pretty sure 1958 is pretty close to what this when this was made. Uh, not any later than 61 or two for sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure of that one. This thing is just amazing. So let's see, 58, 30, 50 years old, 52 years old. Um, <laughs> they built a pretty nice unit back then, uh, Woodcore did. Uh, I know that they've, uh, their name has probably been taken over by uh, other companies, and most likely Webcore products, if they're still around, are not as, as good as they were. That seems to be the trend, happened to RCA and others. But this thing, I'm just kind of amazed. I had to do a little cleaning, I had to do a little bit of lubricating. I didn't really do much in the way of lubricating, but I can smell the old grease. It's just not great. So I'm going to try to degrease this where I can, put some new grease in, and um, get oil where I think it will do the most good. Put it back in the case, and then I'll probably come back with it uh, once more once it's all together using the speakers that uh, it was built with and uh, who knows it might and this is just a little old speaker that I happen to have uh, where are you? oh it's hiding stop hiding um, it's that little, this little speaker I had kicking around so I hooked that up and uh, sounds pretty decent I'm kind of pleased so uh, there it is um, let me just uh, I'll just show you just uh, one more shot of this thing from above here. Um, okay, don't fall over on me here. I don't know why that's doing that. So let's just watch this thing play for a minute. You got this huge flywheel that's spinning around here. It's driving a, a drive tire that you probably can't see. Um, oh, another neat thing about this is. I cranked it this way, it was playing this way. I turned it this way. It plays in a huge direction. And I'm not sure, but I'm kind of wondering if if you had recorded tapes on this into it could if you could record in both directions and play in both directions. I'm not sure about that. Um, I know there were several different variations in the design of the tape heads and the tapes because you had single tra track tapes and you have two track tapes which would allow you to flip them over which would double the playing time of your tape then they went to stereo and I don't remember if they went immediately to uh, four tracks or two but if it was two track stereo then you, had, you could only play it in one direction and then, of course, now with four-track stereo tapes, you can play them in both directions. Um, you clip them over, whatever. Um, so I don't really know. Tape, the tape, really real tape recorders are not something I'm entirely familiar with um, in terms of well, the, the history. Uh, I've owned this for good night. I don't know could be for over 20 years, maybe longer than that. I, it's, I've had it so long, I don't remember even where I got it or how I wound up with this. I just don't know. Um, I did remember that this thing worked and that it played. I also remember that it needed new, new electrolytics. I'm really shocked that the electrolytics weren't any worse than they were, because 10 years ago this was already humming. And when I tried it, um, before I repaired it, it was humming, but I don't think it was any worse than it had been originally. So, but anywho, um, it now has brand new electrolytics, no more hum. This thing is quiet. I've crank, cranked the volume all the way up. You, can, you can't hear it. If I crank the treble all the way to the max and the volume to the max, you hear a slight hiss. But that's, that's it. This thing is super quiet. It is a mono amp. <coughs> 
it is a mono tape player, which actually I'm I'm fine with because now I have a mono recorder player and I have a stereo reel to reel uh, tape player uh, reel to reel. So <clears throat> it's kind of cool that this thing works as well as it does. I mean, all I did was fiddle, hit these rollers with a little bit of rubber renew, cleaned up the flywheel a little bit. I didn't lubricate anything. Probably should have, but I didn't. But I can feel that it's a little bit tight. You know, it's a little bit stiff, a little bit. Fun. So I got to take that apart and clean it. Um, take the roll, take the, the uh, little rubber rollers off. Clean and lubricate those. Lubricate the sliding mechanism and uh, try to get this thing cleaned up. Get some of the dust out of there. Um, but that's it. You know, I, have to, I still have to find a uh, drive belt for this to drive the counter, so I'd kind of like to have that. But um, <laughs> I just I look at how these things are built, and how they were built, and how well it's lasted, and I'm just kind of shaking my head. Let's see now, 58, 40, no, my math is wrong. Why was I thinking? Oh, I don't know what I was thinking. This thing is 62 years old, if it was built in 58. Um, and it still works great. I checked, I did check all the tubes, and they were all good. Um, I really don't know how much, uh, how much this was used. Um, like I said, I know it has been worked on. Uh, either by me or my father, many, many, many years ago. <coughs> um, but I haven't done a lot to this at all. This is probably by far the most extensive work I've done to this since I've owned it. Um, I think the last time it got worked on it was that one capacitor that got changed. I'm really glad I was thorough with it, the uh, resistors. Some of them were way off. And I know tube, tube equipment, I mean, if the voltages are anywhere near where they're supposed to be, they will usually work. But not necessarily as well as they might. I'm really, really happy with the, the sound quality of this, the clarity and all that. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how it sounds using the speakers that it came with because it has a pair of, it's got an oval speaker and it's got another smaller speaker could very well sound better than it does with just that one. But anyway, I'm excited that I've got it working and I'll probably come back and, and do a final video just showing it together and working. Um,